Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome people who are already the part of uh, our weekly sessions. Today our guest speaker is Evan and uh, we are going to talk about the safe reporting and planning. The people who have joined for the first time, uh, very welcome to you guys as well. My name is Meghna and uh, I'm the uh, Atlassian community leader with Dixie Jen. And uh, we do this, uh, we were doing this uh, every week, but uh, we took a break for like last week and then uh, we have started this. This is unusual, we don't do it on a weekday, but I see a lot of good responses and a great number of RSVPs, so I'm excited for this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll request you to uh, leave your questions in the chat group also will leave some time for you to ask questions directly to Evan and uh, once we are done with the session I'll share the recordings with everyone with me I don't have Deepthi today so we have Sajid who is the online community leader uh, go ahead say hi to all the people who have joined hey guys uh, some of you might know me some of you must be new so my name is Sajit I work with Trundle uh, which is an Atlassian partner organization I have been with the Atlassian community program for almost three years now was the community leader for Delhi but now uh, now I've moved on to more of an online role uh, really excited to join this session because I, I have been fortunate enough to see a preview of this session that uh, Evan is going to do today uh, beforehand because uh, uh, we we had a conversation regarding safe reporting and visual script and I really wanted to get this done because we've been having a lot of questions in the past from folks in the community uh, regarding safe and its reporting capabilities inside Jira. So yeah, really excited, looking forward to this session. And Evan, uh, just a quick question. You're comfortable with the recording of the session, right? Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Evan, I believe then in that case, you can start with your introduction. People will keep joining in for a couple more minutes and then we can start. Uh, again, as Meghna said, guys, if you have any question, feel free to type it in the chat and we'll try to resolve it. Uh, I'll man the chat. So any questions that needs to be answered uh, by Evan, I will raise it. And otherwise, please uh, keep yourself at mute so that we don't have that issue, you know, where there's a lot of bad noise. That's it, go ahead, Evan. Awesome, so thank you so much for having me, guys. Uh, my name's Evan Golden, uh, I'm from San Diego, California. Uh, I've been in the community for well over a decade now. I've uh, been using Jira for, well, I can't even remember how long. Uh, so I, I've done application administration, I've done consulting, coaching, and stuff around that. I'm currently the lead solutions architect uh, and PM for Visual Script for Jira and Confluence Marketplace Applications. Uh, and today we're going to be, uh, again, like they said, reviewing safe reporting and planning with Jira software. Uh, would you like me to get started with the presentation or? Yeah, okay. why not? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay, great. So. So first, what we're gonna do, here's the agenda. First, what we're gonna do is discuss how you can use out-of-the-box uh, configurations in JIRA to implement the essential level first, and then we'll show you how to do it with the portfolio level. Then what we're gonna do is review some of the challenges that come with implementing SAFE with only JIRA, followed by a review of some of those common reports and planning tools used in an organization that is practicing SAFE. We're going to dive into the different marketplace applications that are available for reporting and planning. So we're not just going to show Visual Script today. We're going to show all the other apps that are available around these different reporting uh, tools and needed. And finally, what we're going to do is demo that Visual Script Safe solution. Okay, so you can configure Safe with out of the box Jira software configurations, and we're going to start here with Essential Safe. It's that foundation, it's that lowest level, and its focus here is on feature development by multiple Agile development teams, which make up a single Agile release train, or ARP. There are multiple ways to configure Essential Safe, and the visual here that you see on the slide is one of those ways. And basically what it is showing is a single JIRA project for an entire Agile release train, and it houses all of the epics and stories worked on by the teams in the ARP. 
Now, safe features, as we know, fe the term features and safe are translated as Jira epics. They live in a program backlog, which is what you see on the top there, which is managed by product management. And it's basically a Jira Kanban board, and it's used to manage the development and the deployment of those epics. There's one epic to many stories, and they're connected with your epic link field. And stories are basically, again, those work items, and they're assigned to development teams that together will meet the requirements of each epic. They live in a team backlog, so you can see three team boards there. So uh, they live in the team backlog, and these are basically scrum boards, and they're used by the development teams to manage their stories. So how is it configured? So stories would be assigned to sprints. We call those iterations and safe within a program increment. And that would be using the sprint field. And fixed versions are, are being represented for uh, program increments. And so each story would then also be assigned to a program increment. Teams are now assigned stories using the component field or a custom field. And then what happens is each one of these boards will filter off of that field so that it can um, include the stories that are only assigned to that team. So just walking through it again really quick, there's a program board here, a program backlog, and that's a Kanban board. It's housing all of the Jira epics, which are safe features. And then what happens is those epics are epic linked down to stories, and those stories are assigned to teams using the component field or a custom field. And that filter on that scrum board is then um, configured to only look for its individual team, that it, can, it would only include the stories that are assigned to that team. Uh, there's one exception to the team field. So um, many of you probably know that uh, uh, portfolio for Jira recently had a name change to advanced roadmaps. It is, it's also included in Jira Cloud Premium. So with that, there is a team field that comes with what was portfolio is now advanced roadmaps. And it's basically a custom field. So, um, or it's, it's a field that comes with it that's team. So you configure your teams in advanced roadmaps. Once you commit that data to Jira, it's going gonna, it's gonna to assign that team uh, within the Jira issue. Now you can um, JQL query uh, off of the um, that team field to then um, to then create your board and filter your board that way. All right, so adding portfolio level it usually includes another project. Okay, so this project is housing what we call the strategic initiatives, and they're worked on within the business. Now, in Safe, we know these as portfolio epics. The reason we're calling them initiatives, like the reason we call them epics as features or features epics is, again, when Portfolio for Jira or now Advanced Roadmaps came out, they use that term initiative. And we're focusing here on Atlassian. Um, and therefore, what I'm doing is just focusing on Atlassian um, uh, terminology, if you will. But basically, an initiative is simply a large body of work. And what it does is to when it's completed, it's providing solutions that are ultimately providing value to customers. Okay, so there's one initiative to many epics, <clears throat> and they're linked via a built-in link type, like relates or, um, yeah, relates would be a good example of that, or a custom link type that you might create, like parent-child. Uh, there is one exception, again, uh, if you're using that advanced roadmaps, uh, it comes with a parent link field. And as you're creating your hierarchy in advanced roadmaps, so you're creating your hierarchy from story to epic to initiative, it's gonna automatically create a parent link between the initiative and the epic. Now the epic to story will be your epic link, but this would create a parent link using that parent link field from initiative to epic. And therefore uh, it's using that field instead of a built-in link type, okay? Now um, there is, okay, so initiatives live in a portfolio backlog and that's what you see at the top here. And basically it's a Kanban board and it's used to manage the status of initiatives. So we're managing initiatives in the portfolio backlog within the portfolio project. We're managing our epics in the agile release train project with the um, program backlog. And then we're manage the teams are managing stories in their team board um, and team backlog within that board itself. Okay, so, but what are some of the challenges that come with these out of the box configurations? So I showed you that Jira is good at managing a safe implementation. However, the biggest challenge is that management does not get that much needed reporting and visibility uh, around the work that's being done. So 
Um, there are many challenges in reporting. An example of that is different roles in the organization need to see the reporting from different data sets. So let's go back to the previous slide. There are three data sets here, right? They are initiatives, epics, and stories. So different roles in the organization have different questions and they, and basically questions are answered via reporting and they need to be answered with one or more of these data sets. For example, a product manager will need to see the reporting around the stories that their team is working on, but they're also going to want to see how they roll up to the epics they're linked to. So they could see how their teams are contributing to the overall feature development, which is basically completing those initiatives and providing that value to customers. Another one is management may want to see different representations of the same data. Now, this is just not just a matter of preference. Um, now, it is a matter of preference, but not only that. It's also a matter of perspective. We all consume data differently, and a report is only as good as the questions it can answer by the intended consumers. So there are a lot of apps out there, and many of them will do a few things. Right? One, they will tell you what data you will see. And secondly, they will tell you how you will see that data. Now, this does not help meet the need of different data for different roles and different representations of the data. So let's review some of the common reports and tools needed for planning, reporting, and retrospective. So roadmaps, um, they're tools used for planning. And for top-down planning, having roadmaps at each level, the initiative and epic levels, is quite useful. Dependency reports, which, which I call utility tools, and they're great at helping with the planning process. So understanding dependencies at, from stories within an epic or epics to each other or epics within an initiative can help with roadmap planning at each level of SAFE. Velocity reports, not just at the team level, but for the entire Agile release train. Understanding how much work your train can do per iteration and broken down into teams, of course, is quite important. It's also a valuable tool for retrospective to monitor trends at the train, team, and sprint level. Program boards, we know these as uh, program increment or PI boards. They're good for planning and viewing the stories by team and by sprint assignments. It's also used to manage and view dependencies between stories across sprints and teams. Burn up and burn down charts, not just at the sprint level, but also scaling up to the program increment. Seeing the burn down and burn up for each sprint and program increment helps answer those critical questions in retrospective around uh, daily performance so that decisions can be made for future sprints and PIs. So um, in order to get many of these common reports and tools, you will require one or more marketplace applications that work with Jira software. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk through each one of these categories and show the apps that are available um, within Jira, uh, Jira, within the marketplace to help with building these out. So first are hierarchies. Now, I didn't mention hierarchies originally or initially in the last slide, but hierarchies are really important. Um, they're critical because you want to see the breakdown from the highest level of requirements to the lowest. It's great for just uh, overall visibility of the work, the, the initiatives, the strategic work that our, our leadership is asking us to do, broken down to the features that, that we are being asked to do as teams in order to provide that value and meet those initiatives, down to the work items, the stories that our teams are working on. So basically it shows the highest level of requirement to the lowest. And Three examples of that are advanced roadmaps. Now, I include that here as a marketplace app because in data center and server, it's still on the marketplace. It's not, in it's not for cloud because it's available in premium cloud, but it has unlimited hierarchy. It's quite easy to configure and uh, it works really well. Um, structure is a good tool as well. It creates that hierarchy within structure if you're familiar with that app. Uh, it's made by ALM Works. And of course, visual script. So visual script, um, has the, I'll, I'll walk through what it is, but it has the ability to create hierarchy as well. Roadmaps. So Jira software out of the box has roadmaps um, in cloud. So in cloud and next gen projects, you have a roadmap and they're basically saying it's good for planning of a single team. It's going to be available in classic projects soon. Um, and then advanced roadmaps. So advanced roadmaps is that portfolio that's available uh, in premium cloud and as a marketplace add-on, again, in for data center and server. Uh, it has a really great roadmap um, if you haven't seen the newer updated version of it. 
um, and it, it roadmaps your entire hierarchy that you create in the app. Visual script. So we have a di we have multiple types of roadmaps. I'm going to show you two of those today, uh, and they're they're different recipes. We call them recipes within the cookbook, and they're different recipe uh, representations of the data. Uh, big picture. So big picture. Uh, you can buy that as an app, which includes Big Gantt, or you can buy a Big Gantt by itself. And it's a Gantt tool, so it's showing a schedule of the work that's being done. So uh, we call it a roadmap, and it shows dependencies, um, but it's, it's also more of a schedule itself. Uh, structure Gantt, so if you purchase Structure, which I showed you in the previous slide, you can also purchase Structure Gantt. And basically what that's gonna do is give you a side-by-side -side representation of your structure, next to it the Gantt scheduling of the stuff in the structure. And you can do representations, uh, dependencies as well. Uh, and then Easy Agile Roadmap. So it's made by Easy Agile. Uh, it's another uh, marketplace application uh, vendor and they make a road mapping tool as well. Program boards. Um, Visual Script, we have a PI board and I'll show you that today. Um, Easy Agile Programs is a is an app in the marketplace that is a PI board, um, and Big Picture has a PI board built into its app as well. Dependency reports. So Advanced Roadmaps comes with pretty nice dependency reports. Visual Script, I'll show you, has multiple dependency reports at each level that um, have uh, complete visualizations of those uh, dependencies. Velocity. So as we probably know, Jira Software out of the box at the board level has a velocity chart. So it shows you what was committed and it shows you what was completed for each sprint. Visual script, what I will show you is we have velocity at the team and at the train level. Burn up and burn down. So Jira software out of the box has some burn up, burn down uh, reporting. Visual script, we have burn up and burn down at the PI and at the sprint level. Uh, and easy BI has line charts, which you can do burn down with. Uh, and uh, Agile Reports for Jira, which is a app made by C Prime, uh, they have burned down as well. And then lastly, charts and graphs. So why did I include this in here? So we have great reporting and planning tools, and we went through a lot of those in the slides. But every so often, management needs to see a visual representation of one to two metrics. Um, for example, how many stories? Uh, how many stories per sprint? Um, how many story? How many sprints? stories per sprint and per PI. So things like that, where you can use charts and graphs to really represent that well. Jira software has charts and graphs. So from a dashboard perspective, you get a pie chart. From a reporting perspective, they have a bunch of reports that give you line charts, bar charts, et cetera. Visual script, we have all kinds of charts, line charts, area charts, and I'll show you a bunch of those today. Uh, Easy BI is a BI tool, so it's built around charting and graphing. Arsenal Data Plane, same thing, um, built around charting and graphing. And Custom Charts for Jira, it's a newer app. Uh, very easy to use for high-level reporting um, with basically pie charts and bar charts and two-dimensional filter statistics. So they make it really easy to use right within the dashboard. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an app that um, provides less, less types of charts, but it's also, like I said, quite user-friendly. So let's go ahead and get into the demo. And what I need someone to do is tell me when you can see my dashboard. We can do that. Fantastic. So um, what is Visual Script? So Visual Script, it's a marketplace application and it's available in Jira and Confluence. Uh, it's available in cloud and server currently. And basically what it does is it provides visual reporting within Jira dashboard gadgets. So you're looking at my safe dashboard here, but also within Confluence page macros. So with Confluence, um, you would you can get the Jira data from Confluence um, in server. And then within Jira dashboards, which a lot of our customers use, you would render the visuals right within there. So when I first add a gadget, I'll show you what this looks like. Basically it comes with a visual script gadget. I add it and it's gonna create a folder structure. So it's gonna showcase me uh, the organization of all the reports I have. Now this, this organization is created on the back end. So um, the, our admin interface would allow you to create folders, organize scripts within folders, uh, et cetera, okay? And what you do is you're basically housing your scripts. Uh, you're creating folders within folders, 
in your housing or scripts, however you want to organize it. This My Reports section is your custom script section. Uh, what do I mean by custom scripts? So there is a text editor in Visual Script, and uh, you can use JavaScript and reach into the Jira API and Cloud and Server and create the create visuals that way. Um, you can also use any of our built-in reports, which I'll show you some of those today, as templates, and you can load up the entire script in the back end, edit it the way you want, and then launch it. Um, you can also import and export scripts between instances. So if you want to share scripts with another team or however you want to do that, you can do that as well. Now, it also comes with a lot of built-in reports. And we're always growing this list. And the reason for that is we want all of our customers, no matter what role you are, to be able to find a tremendous amount of value right within the built-in scripts. You know, so it's an easy to use tool, but also allow you the flexibility to create some of those custom scripts. And I'll show you one of those today. So going into our safe story, we're going to start at the portfolio level. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the initiative roadmap. The focus of the initiative roadmap is to uh, show you which initiatives and epics are being worked on when and by which teams. So basically, when you first launch a script, it's going to ask you for a series of parameters. It's just quick data entry so that if it can find the data in Jira that you're asking for, it can basically create those relationships or find those relationships depending on how your script is written and then create the visual and render it right into the gadget. So basic parameters, project key, we're gonna put that in there. Um, the fixed version, so we're doing our two PIs. We'll do PI one and PI two. Uh, do we wanna show epics, true or false? You can either only show initiatives or show initiatives and epics. I'll show those. Team filter, meaning do we only wanna include uh, information for certain teams. I'm going to leave it blank and show all teams. Uh, the team field. So you have a drop down here where you can select a component field. If you're using projects for teams, that's okay. If you're using portfolio, which we're working on changing all the names to advanced roadmaps, uh, tempo, we can, we can integrate with tempo teams as well. And then if you select custom, you would just type in the custom field name here that you're using for your team. And you would just type that there. Uh, the data type, story points or time tracking. And then the integration with portfolio, this is a parameter that we're actually updating right now. But basically what it's doing is if you select true, it's going to use that parent link field for the initiative to epic relationship. If you select false, it's going to default to that relates link type. You can customize that as well in the back end. Hey, uh, so Evan, I'm, there's a, yeah. sorry, there's a question on the chat. It says, is this initiative roadmap a plugin or a gadget over the dashboard? This is a gadget. So Visual Script is the, is the marketplace application. And these are all get, uh, reports that are available within it. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. thanks. Sure. So what you're looking at here is a Gantt recipe. So we have multiple different types of recipes. And I'm going to show you another roadmap that's different than this at the feature level. But basically what we're doing on the far left, you can pan zoom in and out so you can see whatever you want to see. Um, and basically on the far left here, you see the top levels are initiatives. The second level are our child epics. Okay, and they're all hyperlinked to the issues, so you can access them that way. In the second column, you see the team assignment. So how is this doing it? So it's basically looking down at the story level. The component field that's assigned to that story is then rolling up to the epic. And if stories are assi if have, the epic has stories that are assigned to all three teams, it's going to show all three teams here because the epic is being worked on by all three teams via the stories, right? The estimates. Uh, our story point based estimates. So it starts at the story, rolls up to the epic, which rolls up to the initiative. So you can see all of that, um, all the story points broken down. Start and end date based on fixed version, duration and days. Uh, percentage completed. And then you'll see you got your progress bar here. And basically you have your progress of your entire roadmap, your progress of each initiative. And this is the one we're currently working on here. And everything turns black uh, when it's completed. Uh, everything starts as purple, and you'll see how it eventually turns black as progress is done. So that is our initiative roadmap. Okay. Now, while you're roadmapping, though, we talked about these utility tools of dependency reports. So when I'm doing this and I'm planning this out, uh, I'm going to probably want to understand the dependencies of the epics within each initiative because I need to know what I need to work on first, right? So. I, we have a report called the initiative dependency report. Basically, all you do is you enter the issue key of the initiative, and we're going to use 
SARTP 163, because we're gonna we're gonna work together with all these reports and tell a story. So uh, SARTP 163, are what link type are we using uh, for for the um, dependencies at the underlying issues? And we're using blocks. And then what is our link type between our parent-child relationship of the initiative to Epic? We're gonna say false because we're not gonna use that parent link. We're gonna use the relates link type. So I'm running this report. This is gonna use our grid recipe. And you're gonna see a bunch of these grids that are used in many different ways throughout this demo. And on the far left, you'll see this is our initiative right here. So it's anchoring this report. In the center, you'll see these are the child epics. So you'll see these are the same epics um, as we have here, uh, 98765, 98765, right? Those are our child epics that are using that relates link type. Now, when I go to the top here, I'm showing the epics that are blocking my child epic. That means that epics, SARTP 22 and 23 has stories that are blocking stories in SARTP 19, okay? And SARTP 19 has stories that are blocking stories in SARTP 17 and 16. We also provide the status and basically blue to do, yellow uh, in progress, green being done. This, this uh, initiative is completed. And then you also get a hyperlink to all of the epics stories, the number of them with the percentage complete. So it gives you a top-down view of dependency mapping of an in, the epics within an individual initiative, which helps you so that you can plan out, one, which initiatives you work on first based on those dependencies. Because these, these dependencies can go across initiatives, they can go across projects, they can go across teams, it doesn't matter. It's if, the, if the links are created, it's gonna recognize it as a dependency, all right? So this takes us down and we're starting now at our essential level. And we're doing what um, we do right, we do before PI planning. Eventually the goal is to get there, right? Because we wanna know what work our teams have to work on and when. But in order to do that, first we need to map out our features per PI. So we're doing that with this feature roadmap. And the feature roadmap, again, very high level um, parameters, project key, fixed versions. Do the team fil filter again, do we wanna only show certain team data? I'm gonna do all. Uh, the team field is, we're going to select component, but again, it's that same drop down, and we're going to select component. If you select custom, you would just type that here. Um, show dependency lines. I'm going to leave it as false. These are the dependency lines at the epic level. I'll just leave it as false for now. And this is going to use our grid recipe. So this is going to be a very different looking roadmap than what you're probably used to. Um, and basically what it's going to show is two columns, one for each PI, PI1 and PI2 and we're gonna show the epics within each column. So you'll see PI1, PI2, the dates of those fixed versions. These are the epics that are being worked on with each one of those fixed versions. So let's look at each one of them. So SARTP 19, you get a hyperlink to the epic, the summary, the team assignments. Now, just like this report, it's based on the story level. So team A, team B, and team C are working on stories within SARTP 19. You get the status, the number of issues again with the percentage resolved. You also get an additional feature in this report where we call this an expanded view. So you click on this and it gives you a completely different visual. And what we're looking at here is a grid representation of the stories within SARTP 19. So these are the six stories hyperlinked to them, 19, 20, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124. You get the summaries of each, you get the sprint assignments, you get the team assignments, the story point estimates, the status, and the dependencies. So you'll see 109, 111, and 113 um, are blocking, or I'm sorry, are being blocked by 123. 139 and 141 are blocking 123. So you get those dependencies right there. But like our other level, at the initiative level, we want a utility tool. Um, we have this at every level. So the utility tool here is our Epic dependency report. You just type in the Epic key, the link type is blocks, and you run this, it's gonna look very similar, except that anchor issue now is gonna be an Epic, and we're gonna show the dependencies at the story level. And the reason this is important to look at is because 
this data right here <clears throat> gives me the dependencies of of all of the uh, stories within the epic. So if you take a look at SARTP 123, we're going to use that story as an example throughout the demo. Um, within this epic, SARTP 19, these are the stories, those six stories that I showed you on this grid here. SARTP 123 right there is being blocked by 139 and 141, same as here. And it is blocking 109, 111, and 113. Same as here. Uh, Evan, we have a question. Is the epic progress automatically calculated at, as per the link stories progress? Correct. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So as stories are completed, that progress will go up in percentage. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Um, so what you'll see here now is that we talked about in the slides, this idea of different representations of the same data. Some user might be totally OK with using a feature roadmap and managing dependencies right from these expanded views. It's fine, right? But if you want to see a visual, because visuals answer a lot more questions, you could use a report like this. Because this way, um, you're getting the status like you're getting here. Um, but you're also seeing just a visual from a top-down view of those dependencies. So it's a utility tool. It's, used to, it's meant to help you in planning. OK, so now we know. We, we have mapped out our initiatives. We have mapped out our epics. We understand the dependencies at the epic level, at the story level. We're getting towards PI planning. We're, we're slowly getting there. But we need to know how much work our teams can do and how much work our train can do per iteration. So for that, we have a program velocity report. Now, this is going to be extraordinarily different than what you're used to in a velocity report. But, I, but it answers a ton of questions. So I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, the project key, start date, end date, because we want the user to be able to time box the measurement of velocity. Maybe you want to do it by PI. Maybe you want to do it by sprint. Maybe you want to do it by quarter. It doesn't matter. Um, the team field, again, you select which one you want. I'm selecting component. And then you can enter custom field here if you select custom, data type, story points, or issue count. I'm going to leave it at story points. Now, this is going to create three different grids. The top grid is going to be our team grid. And you'll see each row is representing a team. So team A, team B, team C. For each one of the rows for each team, you'll see total story points, total completed story points, the completed number of sprints that they worked on, um, basically the iterations, and then that team velocity. Now, just because team C has 20 doesn't mean it's better than team A. And there's a lot of variables, as we know, that go into velocity to, and the, mean, the reason I mentioned that is because this report is not meant to create competition. This is used by product management so that we can, and, and we can properly do our PI planning based on the velocity that our teams can work on and our overall train can work on. Now, if I want to see the trend analysis in retrospective to understand how our team is performing sprint over sprint, I click this expanded view and I get the sprint data with hyperlinks with all of the average data as it's going as it's going sprint to sprint so you'll see my team a is incrementally getting better from six all the way to eight um, team c this one is much bigger so it, it made an entirely new visual we actually went down but then we went back up and back down so based on how the data was entered for the demo data uh, it shows that team c is actually kind of staggering up and down where team a is was is steadily improving the second table is our train table. So this is the total story points all of our teams are working on, the total completed story points, the completed number of iterations, the program velocity. So this is the velocity for our entire Agile release train. Now, based on that data, we also have a table here that says the number of sprints to complete the remaining estimated work is one, meaning the difference between total story points and total completed story points is lower or the same number as our program velocity. So we can complete everything in one sprint. If this number is two, that means the difference is higher than our velocity. Now, there are many reasons it could, it could be that, but it's giving you that what so that you can investigate that why. So what I can do now is I could take and I can go look at the trend analysis for each team and understand why we can't complete everything in one sprint. Maybe we're not estimating correctly. Maybe one of our teams has someone that went on um, vacation um, for sick vacation for a family member. Whatever the reason is, you'll be able to see that data here so that you can go investigate. 
But most importantly, what we have now is an understanding of how much work our teams can do per iteration and per program increment. So we get to our program increment board. So just project key, the sprint names. I'm gonna do four sprints because they're my development sprints. Uh, team filter again, uh, issue type is story. My team field is component and I'm leaving that blank. This is gonna be a grid. It's gonna be what you would expect in a PI board. How are we doing for time, Sajit and Magda? We doing okay? Yeah, yeah, we are, we are okay. around 20, 25 minutes. Okay, great. Um, so you'll see here that we're basically, the Y axis is our teams, that's our component field. The X axis is our sprints. Those are the sprints I entered. What it's doing is it's actually able to go in there and look at the boards. And if you have these sprints configured, it's gonna find the board IDs and based on your cadence of your sprints, it's gonna create this report. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you create your sprints, you're not able to add dates into your sprints until you start a sprint in JIRA. Um, so what we're doing is saying, if you create those four sprints, we're gonna find that active sprint, find the number of days you're, you're running in that sprint, one week, two weeks, four weeks, whatever. And then we're gonna create that cadence based off of that. And then we're gonna create this, this uh, gadget um, based on the future sprints by sprint ID going incrementally up. So you'll see in each cell, uh, team A, sprint one is working on 143 and 139. So you get access to the hyperlink to the story, the summary, the link to the epic, and the status of the story itself. Uh, and then you get sprint by sprint, team by team, but we also talked about getting those cross team and cross sprint dependencies. Like before, Here's our SARTP 123. We have those two inward dependencies that are blocking it and those three outward dependencies that it is blocking. The idea with this is it's meant to be on a big board. Okay, so we're doing all of our work in JIRA. We're, we're assigning sprints, we're creating dependencies with the block link type and the, the end result, the output of our PI planning is this board. And just like in a safe dictates, uh, it says one of the outputs of successful PI planning is a program increment board. So this is our source of truth that our teams are working on. But like every other level or every other um, grouping, we have a utility report. So with SARTP 123, you'll see we had this utility report um, that broke it down here in a single column. So we have a report that shows only that column where you just type in SARTP 123, the blocks link type, and it's gonna create that column report. Meaning that if, if you don't care about the epic dependency report and you only want to see the report for this individual, um, this individual story, as you're doing your PI planning, you can use this utility uh, to marry it with the PI board in order to help you with your planning. Okay. We got the PI planning. We did our work. Now we're in retrospective. We want to see our burn down and how we performed. So we're starting with the program increment. So we have a program increment burn down. Basically, project key, what's the name of your PI um, fixed version? Are you using data, data story points or issue count? Team filter, uh, and then team field. <clears throat> and the reason we do team field is because uh, if you're doing a team filter, you only want to filter certain data. It can look for it and find that that way. So here's the data broken down and burned down for all of our teams in that PI across our train. So you'll see the ideal line is in black. The red line is in these the actual, right? So ideal, black, red, actual. Um, this is using our line chart recipe. So this is one of those charts we talked about. Up here, you get a bunch of data points around the PI itself. And then you also get this expanded view. Now I'm gonna zoom in because there's a lot of days on a PI. And basically what it's gonna show me is started a story points, hyperlinked, resolved story points, hyperlinked, how much was added in, in that day, and what are the story points in end of day? So it's gonna give me all of that data and it's gonna allow me the opportunity to find the story point creeps. Like right here, we had 18 story points. So we also have a program increment burn up report. So it's the same exact parameters, but instead of going from the total number of story points down to zero, we're gonna go from zero to the total number of story points. So you'll see again, we start at zero, the ideal is red, the, uh, the ideal is black, the actual is red, and this green line is our scope line. So you'll see we're carrying scope across, and then there's those 18 story points that we showed you in the, 
in that expanded view. So those are those 18 story points. There's that creep right there. Now, if you want to see it for individual sprints, we have a sprint burn down and a sprint burn up as well that you just put right in a gadget. Um, so very easy to configure, project key, the sprint name, story points or issue count. And then we have this idea of capacity. I'm going to run the report. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Um, it's going to be just like your PI burn down, except we have that capacity line. And basically, the black line will be ideal. The red line is uh, actual. There's that, there's that scope creep again, those 18 story points. This capacity line. So what does this mean? Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, uh, based on PI planning, we only needed to estimate 35 story points for our team, or 36 or whatever it is. But our capacity is actually 65. So we could, we could technically complete 65 story points um, based on capacity alone. Between here, the data between the story points between the blue and the black represent risk that I can take on and still complete my sprint. So right here, we're seeing a lag, right? Now, this might be a weekend. I, I'm not 100% sure, but we're seeing kind of the steady lag here. I could still accept this risk, even though my ideal burn down is lower than this because it's below my capacity line. As I'm going up with the scope creep, I can still accept this risk because it's below my capacity line. As I go above it, as I get above it now, that's saying we have a higher risk. We might not complete the sprint as estimated. So that's the point of the capacity line. Um, the burn up report. So we have a sprint burn up. And uh, again, it's just like the PI burn up, meaning that you have your ideal uh, line in black. Your red line is actual. And here's that scope. And there's that 18 point burn, uh, creep. I'm going to show you the expanded view and you can see it there as well. So you get all that data. So those are our burn up and burn down reports. Now I'm just going to show you uh, three quick charts and then uh, I guess we can go back for questions. Um, the first one's our area chart. So the idea with our charts is that you can use them in any project with any field. These are going to be released, I think sometime in the next few days actually. So you'll see these, what we call standard reports in the next few days in our ne next release. And you'll see it's just a project key, the field you want to use. So we have a bunch of fields you could select from. I'm going to do status. If you select custom, you can type in the custom field here. What is the time period you want to measure? I'm going to do two weeks, but we give you options here as well. Um, issue type story. Do I want to include only unresolved issues? I'm going to include resolved and unresolved. So you get that option there, which kind of further filters the data. If you're familiar with JQL and you're comfortable with it, you can type in an additional JQL statement here to further filter the data. So however you want to do it. And um, basically the idea is anyone can use this report and then anyone with JQL skills um, and understanding can further filter the data with this parameter. So this is going to be what you would expect in the area chart. It's going to look very much like a cumulative flow diagram actually that you get in Jira. So what you're looking at here is the two weeks, the statuses represented by colors, and it's a stacked area chart, just like a cumulative flow. The idea is that you want to want to identify bottlenecks. So in each one of these days, we had a bunch of stuff in progress. We can go investigate why it was in progress. If we have other statuses where something is like stuck in QA for a really long period of time over days, then we know QA might have an issue that we need to go investigate. You also get the expanded view where you get every day, every status, the number of issues with hyperlink to those issues. And that, so that's the area chart. The next one I'll show you is our pie chart. Um, pretty much the same exact parameters. So the uh, project, the field that I wanna do, I wanna do fixed version because I wanna see the number of issues per PI. Uh, my issue types, unresolved issues, I'm gonna select false, so I'm gonna do resolved and unresolved. I'll do no additional JQL filtering. Very, very basic parameters to enter. Um, I'm gonna run it, it's gonna create my pie chart. And each wedge is going to represent a PI. So you'll see that right there. PI1, PI2, PI3. If I hover over the wedge, it's going to give me the name of the PI, the number of issues, and the percentage. If I click the expanded view, it's going to give me each PI, number of issues with hyperlink. Finally, I'm going to show you a bar. Actually, I have two more. Sorry. <laughs> I lied. I'm going to show you a bar chart. And so it's the same exact parameters as the pie chart, but I'm going to do it by sprint. And I'm going to do only unresolved issues. So I select true, I run it, 
and it's going to give me a bar chart. Each bar is going to represent a sprint. And it's going to give me the number of unresolved issues per sprint. So you'll see my, my sprints that I have unresolved issues are 6 through 12. And these are the numbers. And I get the expanded view as well. Now, if I go back and I edit those parameters and I make it true, uh, false, and I'm doing unresolved issues also, I run this and it's going to give me more sprints because it's going to take me back all the way to sprint one where I have all of my all of my issues resolved and unresolved. Okay, so that's our bar chart. One of them that we're gonna release, I just wanted to show one of the features that we're working on. Um, we're working on a lot of these other charts. Um, we have timelines, we have charts, we have grids, all these things where you could just enter quick data and create these visuals. Um, and this is our stack bar chart. So this is one that we're working on now. And basically project key, we're gonna do sprint as well, but our category field, we're gonna use fixed version. and um, we're not gonna put any display values in there. Th this would be what you can put the fields comma separated for what you wanna show in each one. And so I'm gonna run this. It's gonna be a stacked bar chart and you'll, you'll see what I mean by the category and the field. So you'll see that the, um, the colors represent the sprints, the number of issues in a sprint. And, um, and then each one of these, col these bars is a PI. So basically how many issues for each sprint do I have per PI? And it's showing me here. So it's stacked. That's something we're working on right now. Um, all right, the last thing I'll show you, and then, because I, I, I told you I would show you a custom report. We do a lot of work with, with customers where we, we just talk to them and we identify all these interesting use cases. Uh, basically, the, the reports I showed you at the bottom there come from those conversations. So one of the reports that we created was for a customer. Um, called story statistics so the idea was I'll, I'll run the report and then i'll show you what what they wanted so it's a start date end date project issue types do we want to include future sprints so if there's created sprints within this time frame that i have not run yet do we want to include the it, the data from there yes uh the team name and then we run this report this is going to use two of our re recipes the grid recipe and the gauge recipe because we have gauges as well and you'll see there's a, just a ton of data in this report and the customer really enjoyed it. Basically it's a row per, um, per team by component field. You get the number of issues and the number of story points committed, the number of issues and number of story points delivered with the percentage. This means that stuff was added. That's why it's higher than hundred. Here's the gauge that represents the delivered versus committed. What was added, what was dropped, what was rolled, rolled to the next sprint. The committed is basically how much started at the beginning of sprint minus the drops. Um, and then if I click the expanded views on each one of these, I get the actual data by sprint for that team, including how many issues are unestimated. So if you, you can find issues that might be unestimated. So this is an example of a custom script that we created for a, um, for a client that we work with. So any, that, that was a lot of information. I hope I went slow enough and, um, explained it um, correctly for you guys, but are there any questions? So guys, I'm, I'm unmuting all of you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Yeah. Thank go. you. Hi, uh, thank you for really yeah. good demo. Is your script like, uh, it's like a plug and play or like you need to make a lot of customization in this one? For which one are you speaking, all of them? Yeah, basically, the basically when you say Jira, the stories we will be creating it, linking we will be creating it manually, but to make this uh, a dependency mapping, the visualization what you shown us and the, yeah the interactive, yeah the epic dependent these things, so it's like automatically we are visualizing it or we need to make some configuration for this. No, so this is the out of the box report. So if you have those blocked links between these stories. Um, and the epic link between these stories and this epic configured in Jira, it's going to create this report. Right. Uh, we also have a Jira align, right? So how is different from this to Visual Script? So that's that's a really good question. Um, we get it often. We also get the question about how are you different than Easy BI quite a bit. Um, so Jira align is it's a huge application, right? And it's it's heavy, um, and it it gives you everything, right? So I don't really consider us um, 
something that we would compare with Jira Align because it's like apples and oranges in a way. Um, what we do is um, you have Jira Align for like 100 plus teams or whatever the case may be. Um, when you get to one to 20 teams, you're dealing with like advanced roadmaps. What we can do is provide reporting for one, to, one team to many teams, even beyond 100, but we're not doing all that financial data per story point and stuff like that that Jira Align will actually provide you. Now, now, that's not to say we can't because we can integrate with Tempo. And if you're doing your budgeting data, if you're doing agile budgeting, lean budgeting with Tempo budgets, we can integrate with that and pull in the financial data via the API. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I was basically looking for my client. So all the tools we are comparing, actually. So we are saying that Jira Align is expensive one because they will be charging yeah. uh, complete users. It's not for the required users. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like for the complete users means we have like maybe three thousand users for Jira as of now, maybe plus more than that. So do we have any customization like in Visual Script like only we can give it to hundred people to demo or something like that? Uh, so 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 you so customizations in Visual Script to demo to to a hundred projects or hundred exactly. teams? What do you? Yeah, exactly. Like for example, this, we have like said right three thousand users, so we don't want to pay for three thousand users. Oh, I see. I see. So, um, we so we're a market. Users, let's say. Yeah. So we're a marketplace application. So you're going to, you're going to pay the user tier as it's dictated in the marketplace. Uh, we don't control that. Okay. So, so if you have a, if you have a 10,000, if you're at 3000 users, I imagine your server or your data center or what? Yeah. Yeah. We have our own server. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're three, if you're 3000 users and server, you're probably paying for a 10,000 user license. Is that correct? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so you would do the same thing with the marketplace apps. Oh, then, yeah, then this is the same like Jira Align cost then. Uh, no, no, not quite. Um, so Jira Align is different because you're paying for Jira Align users um, that, that are not necessarily aligned, for lack of better words, to your, um, your user base in Jira. So not all your users in Jira will use Jira Align. And Sajid, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're actually paying for Jira Align users separately. That's correct. Yeah. So, um, and we are significantly cheaper uh, than Jira Align. Um, we we are we are a reporting tool, so um, we're comparable in price to something more like an EZBI. But we provide many different things than EZBI does because they do charting and graphing. We do charting and graphing, and we do stuff like this that we consider we call in context reporting. Okay, great. Thanks for pointing out exactly sure. going through that now. I'm working on easy BI configurations, exactly. And doing those things and just compare, going to compare with that one. Yeah. Yeah, no, please, please do. And if you have any questions, um, uh, you can, Sajit knows how to reach me. So i um, happy to communicate and, and help you out in any way. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. We have a couple more minutes, guys. If anybody else has any question, I see. Uh, Amber had a question which said, will these gadgets come over only after we install the Visual Scripts plugin? Yeah, so the Visual Script gadget, which is um, what we have up here. Oops, no change report. So the Visual Script gadget that we have here, this is a custom gadget that you get with the app. So when you install the app, you'll get the gadget and then you'll get all of these built-in reports out of the box. So you'll get all the reports I showed you at the bottom there besides the one I showed you last is built in. So you'll get that right out of the box and based on your Jira configurations, it's gonna run the data. Um, and, then, and then you can add custom stuff as well, which is the report I showed you at the top. Uh, Evan, we have a question that says, what are all the options that we have if you want to export the data from here? Okay, yeah, so, so we're not creating data, so you're not exporting data necessarily right so you're you're if you're exporting data like to an excel as an example um you would export that directly from jira we're we're visualizing the data in jira but you do have the ability to export to svg png and jpeg currently so you can get standalone versions of those reports um and you also have the ability on the back end to export any one of the reports itself in what we call a vs vse file and then you can import that right into another Visual Script instance, another Jira instance with Visual Script, and you'll run that report right from there. It's great for like dev and production environments. 
Perfect. Uh, any other questions? We have the last two minutes. Uh, just a quick reminder, guys. Uh, I see some around 18, 19 uh, attendances on the Google Sheet. We had some around 25 participants. Uh, if you've missed out, please update it by tomorrow. That's when Meghna will send out the final recording of the meeting along with the link uh, to the YouTube channel where all the other you know, uh, recordings would be and the link to the WhatsApp group for the Delhi MCR Atlassian community. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to I or Meghna. Uh, Evan, any closing comments? I don't think there are any questions. Very good session. We are really glad that this could happen and we're really excited that we finally have this on recording so that we can post it on YouTube because as I said, since this is the first time we are doing offline, pretty sure a lot of folks would be asking for the video recording and we'll have a couple more questions coming in which I will redirect to you. Yeah, I mean, please do. If there are any questions that bubble up, um, you know how to reach me in many different ways. <laughs> so I'm happy to help out in any way I can. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Evan, for taking out the time and presenting this beautiful demo or the session. We're really glad to have you. Uh, maybe we'll do it in future as well. Uh, yeah, thank you, yeah. all the people who have joined. And all right, then, stay safe. And that's goodbye from us. Thank you for having me. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yep, thanks, guys. Bye.